Hello scholars, thanks for tuning in. We're going to take a look at impulse and momentum. So, first of all, I want to make sure that you have some definitions on your word sheet. So let's start with impulse. And periods uh, three and four, you guys have most of these, but period one, you're going to need to write most of these down. So impulse, you should have this definition from the video last night. Please add it to your word wall. We have the product of force and the time the force um, the product of force and the time over which the force acts so please add this to your word sheet or your word wall we don't have any symbol for impulse but we can write it as force times time and that is equals impulse so you should write this equation on your equation sheet and underneath it let's take a look at the units force is measured in newtons time is measured in seconds impulse is measured in units of newton times second let's take a look at exa of an example here so in the next slide I have here an example, and I'm going to ask that you write this example on a new piece of paper. And on that paper, please label it impulse um, and momentum calculations. Okay, so um, copy down this, please, on your paper. So you should pause the video. I'm going to continue. And all right. So now that you've had a chance to copy down this equ this problem or this situation, let's do what I'm hoping that you guys are all getting very used to doing. Let's circle key information and write it down on the bottom. A thousand kilograms. We don't even know what the problem's asking us yet, but we should at least start to identify our variables. So that's mass. I see this here, meters per second. Um, three meters per second. And I know that that's velocity. I see 200 newtons, and I see that called force. So I can say force equals 200 newtons. And I see 15 seconds. So that's our time interval. And when I wrote this, I should have also told you that the car is starting from rest. So, from rest. So with that, can we also add in VI equals zero? I'm going to scroll this up a little bit here. Nope. V initial equals zero. Okay, now, what is part A asking us? It's asking how much impulse does he exert on the car? And this is true. I often leave the lights on in my car. I'm getting better about it. But every time I do, I almost always have a dead battery. And without a dead, without a good battery, the starter doesn't work, the engine doesn't turn. But because my car is a manual, meaning that I had to shift gears, I had the added luxury. Not that my car is luxurious by any means. But I had the added luxury of being able to push my car fast enough and then jump in and do what's called popping the clutch which means as the car is as the wheels are rolling you put the car into gear and the rolling wheels make the engine turn over and that can cause it to the engine to start up it's great it saved me many times and you cannot do it with a manual transmission okay so this part a is asking us to find how much impulse so we can write on our paper impulse equals question mark we have now clearly defined the information we have and the information we want to find so go back to your equation sheet you have the equation force times time and so it's a pretty straightforward example here you're going to do some more challenging ones tomorrow in class but the force is 200 newtons the time is 3 meters per second so I exert how much impulse on the car uh, oops, sorry, it's not 3, it's 15. 
3,000, 200 times 15, 3,000 Newton, um, I'm really way off here, sorry guys, let's go back and fix that, let's get rid of those meters per second, that should just be seconds, too much babbling about my car experience, okay, so here we have it, 3,000 Newton seconds, I'm going to put a box around my final answer, you should too. So that's impulse, and it's not all about force anymore, it's now about force and how long that force lasts for, and that will tell us overall how much momentum the object that we're pushing gains. So let's now define that word I just said, momentum. So go back to your um, equation sheet. So on your word wall, we're going to define the word momentum. Momentum is the product of, so very similar to impulse, it's going to be multiplying, of the, um, let's say the product of an object's mass and velocity. So on your equation wall, Let's write this down. Let's write momentum. And there is a symbol for momentum. It is lowercase p. Momentum equals mass times velocity. Let's take a look at the units. Mass is kilograms. Velocity is meters per second. And that gives units of kilogram meter per second for momentum. All right, so the units are all good. Let's take a look at uh, an example of momentum. We should go back to um, our definition for momentum here and talk about vectors for a moment. Momentum is a vector quantity, meaning that it has direction. So when we push, um, when an object is moving to the right, we would call that positive momentum, and to the left, negative momentum. And we can show that momentum is a vector because we can put a little hat on it. And it is a moment, it is a vector because velocity is also a vector. And of course, mass is a scalar, does not have direction to it. So um, that's important. In fact, that's really important that momentum has direction, positive and negative, right and left. Okay, now let's go back to. So, same situation as before, this time part B, how much momentum does the, does the car gain? So, we lost all the information that we had before, um, at least I lost it, it's not on our screen anymore. But let's write down here, you should have it on your paper though, how much momentum does the car gain? So, momentum equals question mark. But this word gain means it's changing, so we should add in a change in momentum, a delta momentum. Okay, well let's go to our equation sheet. We know that momentum equals mass times velocity. So change in momentum is going to be mass times change in velocity. And you know, I just thought of something. We should go back to... Okay, so here we are with our example problem. And um, so we are going to plug in the values that we know. Mass is... 1,000 kilograms. Change in velocity is always the final velocity minus the initial velocity. So here we have 3 minus 0. And of course this is going to give us 3,000 kilogram meter per second. Do you notice anything about this answer here? It, should, it is the same as the answer that we just got. Different units, but as we'll see in a moment, actually those units are the same as well. So now we're going to go to the third part of this lesson, which is impulse momentum theorem. So get out your equation and your word walls again. So this time we're going to define this thing we call impulse momentum theorem. And, um, you know what, 
you can do this right on your equation sheet. We're not going to write a def. Um, well, let's yes, we will write a definition. This theorem says that an impulse on an object. always um, an impulse on an object always changes the object's momentum by an equal amount an impulse on an object always changes the object's momentum let's make that plural object's momentum by an equal amount. Now as far as an equation goes for this, it looks like this. Force times time, which is impulse, equals change in momentum. And we can break it down. Change in momentum is mass times change in velocity. So that's force times time equals mass times change in velocity seems like it's a little bit out of the blue how do we know it's right well here's one thing that we can do with it let's look at the units we know force is measured in newtons we know time is measured in seconds we know mass is measured in kilograms we know velocity is measured in meters per second so if these two units are the same then we pretty much know that we have a valid equation now there could be something like you know there could be something like a one-half thrown in there like we've seen one-halves in equations before but I'll tell you right now, this equation does not have that. But um, are these the same, these two sides of the equation? Well, one thing that we can do is we can do a little substitution. You should know from last unit that a newton is a kilogram times what? Times meters per second square. So if we substitute that in for newtons, let's take a look at what happens the seconds. Second square really is seconds times seconds, right? So one of these seconds cancels with the other one. So essentially we're just canceling out the exponent there, the square. And now we have ta -da, kilogram times meters per second and kilograms times meters per second. So this equation looks to be legit. So now we're going to take a look at an example my car. So part C, how does this demonstrate the impulse momentum theorem? Well, from what we just wrote, let's write down the impulse momentum theorem. Force times time, or impulse, equals change in momentum. Let's plug in the values that we got so far for part A. For part A, we got 3,000 newton seconds. For part B, we got 3,000 kilogram meters per second. And we just showed that these two units are the same. So this example illustrates the impulse momentum theorem. And we're going to use that in class um, tomorrow to do some interesting calculations. Okay. So to wrap this up, I want to do another example with you. So let's apply what we just said this situation is, um, this is part two of our examples, and this should be a D, not an A. This is part D. If he, me, exerted this much impulse on a large 1,500 kilogram SUV, how much momentum would it gain? So, exerted this much impulse. So, same force, same time. So, that's 200 newtons times 15 seconds. And we know that that equals change in momentum. So the answer is still 3,000 kilogram times meters per second of momentum. It's going to be the same. That car, that SUV, is going to have just as much momentum from the same pushing as I did on my smaller car. So what's the catch here? This is a good time to talk a little bit about momentum uh, and what it really means. And we'll, we'll develop this idea a little bit more in the days to come. But momentum is mass times velocity. So if we have 
um, momentum of the car, the little Civic, compared to the, men the momentum of this SUV. The momentum of the car is equal to mass times velocity of the car. The momentum of the SUV is mass times velocity of the SUV. Okay, so so what? So what we're saying is that for a car, like a little Civic, we're going to have a small mass, but a large velocity, to get the same momentum as an SUV having large mass traveling with a small velocity. Maybe I can make that velocity even smaller. So, m times v. Because momentum is not about mass, it's not about velocity, it's about the product of the two. And in the lab that we did with the collisions with the metal bearings, is it possible for a small bearing to have more momentum than a large bearing? Of course the answer is yes, if it's going fast enough. If the small bearing is 10 times less massive than the large bearing, it would have to go 10 times faster to have the same amount of momentum. And this is a good time to go back to your equation and make sure that we add this part of the definition of momentum. Momentum is how hard it is to stop a moving object. How hard it is to stop a moving object. Please add that next to your momentum definition. So my car, after me pushing it, would be just as hard to stop as the SUV would be after pushing it um, with the force and the time that I had here. Um, and of course, as you found yesterday, what was stopping the bearings is the carton. And you could actually get the carton moving farther with a smaller bearing if it was moving fast enough. Okay, now we have one more part. So let's tune into the B. So Here. again, this is part, um, part D, two, part E. And um, so in the last this, uh, part here, here, I'm asking how fast this would this A over here? I make but the it should SAT actually travel. be part D. So V final equals question mark. So, all the, everything is the same so, so far, but the let's take a look at what we know. He, we know the momentum me, exerted this much impulse on a large 3,000 kilogram SUV. How much momentum would it gain? Kilogram meters per second. And we know the mass is 1,500 kilograms. So how do we find the final velocity? Well, we just use our equation for momentum. Momentum equals mass times velocity. We can divide both sides by mass. Divide by mass. Mass goes, goes away, and now we have 3,000 kilogram meters per second over um, 1,500 kilograms. Kilograms cancel, and for the velocity we get 2 meters per second equals velocity. Okay, so pretty simple numbers here. The SUV is more massive, so it ends up going slower to have the same momentum as my Civic, which is smaller, going faster. Okay, that's it, folks. Thanks for tuning in. I know this is a long one. Tomorrow, though, I'm going to ask that you use these concepts with your group. So we did the easy work now. Tomorrow will be the time when you get to do some, um, some applying of these concepts. All right, we'll see you in class.